<laughs> okay, great. So, I uh, guess, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here to present our golden egg for the genetics flagship, although it's not really a single golden egg, it's more like a basket of eggs. It's around uh, sustainable models for genetic improvement of livestock linked to delivery systems. So these are models that we've developed for genetic improvement of livestock over the life of the CRP, starting from um, the, the previous CRP, the Livestock and Fish CRP, moving into this one. And I think we're very proud of this achievement because at the start of the CRPs, we really didn't have these models existing. So I'm going to walk you through this, um, this golden egg or basket of eggs using this, this beautiful infographic. So just starting with challenge, I mean, the challenge, of course, is that um, livestock productivity in developing countries is very low, much lower than what we see in the, the Western world. There's many, many reasons for that. And, and this flagship, the genetics flagship, is, is um, you know, really specifically addressing the issue of inappropriate genetics. So uh, the way we've done this is, um, is shown in, in the, the middle circle there under approach. Essentially, we have a different type of genetic improvement strategy for each of the four main species that we, we're working on, which is dairy cattle, chickens, and small ruminants, and to a lesser extent, uh, pigs. Whilst these are all contextualized for the different species, they have some things in common, which is what I want to focus on. One is that they're all participatory. So we did a lot of work in the beginning doing needs assessments and breed um, profiling, asking our women and men farmers what they wanted in their livestock, looking at what the market wanted. We also looked at um, you know, how people wanted a genetic improvement strategy to be run. And based on that, we designed different types of genetic improvement strategies for each of our our species. And, but all of these are also drawing on um, quite upstream um, technologies. So for instance, um, I, there's a little box on, on the left there that says genetic improvement strategies. Underneath that, you can see some technologies. These are genomic technologies. So for instance, for dairy cattle, we're calculating genomic breeding values so combining both genomic information with information on how the, the animal performs, phenomic information, to determine the breeding value of that animal. We have phenomic technologies, which is about, you know, finding good ways of measuring very difficult traits. We have a lot of digital technologies, all sorts of apps that we use to interact with farmers, to obtain data from the farmers, to give feedback to the farmers, and, you know, reproductive technologies, particularly a lot of work on um, customizing AI to work under the field situations that we face. So we have our, our breeding programs in place and they're linked to dissemination systems. So these are mainly AI based, but they could also be uh, natural mating based. On the right hand side of that big approach circle in the middle there, um, you can see some other things that we're doing. One is that, you know, we're very aware and, and Tom stressed on this, that to, to get productivity gains, you need to also work on the issues of health and feed. So we're looking at that, um, working in conjunction with people in those areas to make sure that our improved genetics does translate to improved productivity. And also ensuring that we have livelihood gains. So also working with other components of the value chain to make sure that that improved productivity is translating into improved income through strong markets. Down um, the bottom of that approach button, a couple of other things that have been very critical to us. One is you know, a supportive policy environment. We try to influence that. We have really embedded our genetic improvement strategies in the national system. So we want the national systems to be the owners of these programs. We want them to be able to take them over as we exit. So a lot of capacity building and working closely with the national systems. And we also have a lot of private sector partners as well, um, particularly for um, the, the chicken and uh, pig breeding programs. So I want to move um, to the box on the left now under success factors. So we're considering these models to be quite successful because they're scaling both up um, within countries and out uh, to new countries. And sometimes that scaling is done even in the absence of us, which is, is great to see. So what, what we consider to be really the drivers of the success of this breeding programs is that they're participatory. I've mentioned that they're very contextualized to our different species really built on partnerships, strong partnerships, particularly with the national systems, embedded capacity development, so capacity of 
everyone from the farmers to the national systems, as well as young scientists. We're capitalizing on technologies. I spoke about those. And what we're seeing is really that the countries and the private sector are investing in this. So that is really great. We just go to the um, to the right hand side now on the outcomes. So um, we've had some impact studies done and we're still working on those, but we are seeing improved productivity. So not just genetic gain, but improved productivity and also improved income. And we're really seeing these national systems adopt our strategies. So for example, in Ethiopia, the Ethiopian government has adopted community-based breeding programs as the way that they're going to to do breed improvement of small ruminants, and that's also got into the university curricula uh, in Ethiopia, which is fantastic. Down the bottom, celebrating, I feel that we're really celebrating. For um, cattle, chicken, and small ruminants, we've exceeded our targets in terms of the number of countries that um, we thought that we'd be working with at the start of the CFP, we've gone beyond that. And that 10 years there um, refers to a 10 year celebration we've just had of community based breeding programs ongoing in Ethiopia. So I just want to finish up with a couple of words about moving forward. What we want to do moving forward is really capitalize on, on what we've started, keep improving these breeding programs as we get more data in, we can optimize them more, we can add additional traits. I think we're well placed for this, for dairy cattle, chicken and small ruminants. Where we have some concern is pigs because we had a lot, of, lot less investment in pigs. We never had a, a large bilateral donor there. And I think you know this is going to be really important that we can do more on pigs moving forward because they're, they're monogastrics and, and really important under a, um, climate change concerns. So that is the, uh, the basket of golden eggs uh, from the genetics flagship. Thank you. Many, many thanks, Karen, and you were perfectly on time. So we've heard about these participatory approaches. We've you told us about the outcomes. We're seeing productivity outcomes. We're seeing livelihood outcomes. And we're also seeing uptake and adoption of these, of these approaches. Now, I'm hoping very much that Sahai is back from moving everybody around, because the next exercise, we're very quickly now, we're going to move, we'll ask you to please post in the chat. Um, and what we wanted to see, just very quickly, where and how can you see this genetics advance, and actually it's a bun bundle of, of advances being widely applied. Where and how do you see these being applied? If you could please post in the chat. Thank you very much, Sahai, you posted the message. If you can please, everybody, take a half a minute. Where and how do you see these genetics advances being widely applied? I can put the slide back up for a moment while you're thinking. Um, if I can find my way back, here we go. Where and how do you see these being widely applied? If you can just type in the chat, think about what you heard, give us your feedback, give us your thoughts. Um, are we seeing any chat messages yet? Not yet. People are thinking. Okay. Thank you, so Karen, the credits for the graphics. Yep, thank you, Flora. Ethiopia, lots of traction based on that presentation. Thank you, Flora. Maybe you can post in the chat why, why you're posting what you're posting. Give it, tell us why. Uh -huh. I can see Tom posting something here. If I can move my screen. Feeding companies, the entire bundle. Thanks, Emily. Okay, everywhere where there isn't a strong, well-established public or private sector. Okay, thanks, Tom. So, a question from Alan Tolovy. Do you have a long-run evidence? Karen, are you seeing anything in the chat that you want to reply to, that you want to comment on? Uh, just put the microphone on if you'd like. If you're seeing something there where you say, yep, that's something I agree or... Yeah, so there was, a, um, there was one about um, long-term evidence. And, and yes, uh, breeding programs in livestock, in, in the developed world in particular, there is a mass of long-term evidence that it works and it works really well. And, you know, that is what we, because we've managed to contextualize the models to the systems where we are here, we're now seeing that here as well. 